Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about Chapter 4.1, The Nature of Supply. It's important when we think about supply that we put ourselves in the shoes of a seller, that we think like a seller. Because then we realize that sellers want to sell things for high prices. So if we were selling something, we'd rather sell it for a high price than a low price. So being able to sell something for a high price provides an incentive for sellers to sell things. And so that is an important uh, part of supply and the nature of supply. So let's go ahead and take a look at supply here. So to meet consumer demand, producers will deliver goods and services to the marketplace. Now there's a couple of definitions. Supply. The quantity of goods or services that producers are willing to offer at various possible prices during a given period of time is called supply. So it's important to note that Factors other than price change supply, and when we see a supply curve, we'll ultimately shift the supply curve. Now, supply is different than quantity supplied. So quantity supplied is the amount of a good or service that a producer is willing to sell at each particular price. So price affects quantity supplied, which actually moves you from point to point along that supply curve. Now, the law of supply says this. Producers supply more goods and services when they can sell them at a higher price and fewer goods and services when they must sell them at lower prices. So in other words, as price goes down, quantity supplied goes down. As price goes up, quantity supplied goes up. So there is a direct relationship between price and quantity supplied when it comes to the law of supply. They move um, the exact same way. All right, so according to the law of supply, suppliers will offer more of a good at a higher price. So as price increases, quantity supplied increases. As price falls, quantity supplied falls. So why do producers vary the supply of goods and services? They do this to achieve a profit. So profit is the amount of money remaining after producers have paid all their costs. Profit is made when revenues are greater than the cost of production. So some examples of cost reduction include wages and salaries, rent, interest on loans, bills of electricity, raw materials, any other uh, good or service that is used to manufacture a, a product. So profit is made when revenues are greater than the costs of production. So revenues, as you can see people buying things here, minus the cost of production, you can see people making things there, is equal to profit. Now, pro the profit motive definitely affects the free enterprise market. It governs companies' decisions and it directs the use of resources in the entire market. So it's important to note that when competitors see, uh, when companies see that other companies are making money producing something, they are going to go ahead and move into that market. And this is going to go ahead and drive down profits. And when that happens, then you're going to see some suppliers leaving the market. And ultimately, you're going to have this series of suppliers coming into the market and leaving the market. And ultimately, that profit motive really helps dictate uh, what's going on with supply there. So think about what happened when McDonald's saw that Starbucks was making a lot of money in coffee. What did McDonald's do? They decided to make their McCafe. So there you see an example of a supplier entering the market in order to um, achieve a profit because they're hoping to cut into some of those profits of Starbucks. And if they do, then you might see um, other coffee companies fall out because you're going to see less profits there. All right, now we're going to look at a numerical representation of supply, which is called a supply schedule. It's just a list of prices and quantities supplied. So let's say we're looking at the market for um, screwdrivers. So at $6 a screwdriver, suppliers will supply two. $7 a screwdriver, they supply three. $8 a screwdriver, they supply five. $9, they supply 9 Now, this shows the law of supply because as price goes up, quantity supplied is going up as well. 
Now, if we graph that, we get a supply curve. Here's what a supply curve looks like. Prices on our y-axis, always. Q, or quantity, is going to be on our x-axis, and price is represented by the variable P, and quantity is represented by the variable Q. And our supply curves are going to be upward sloping, always going to be upward sloping, because as price goes up, quantity supplied is going to go up. When we're talking about supply, we're talking about the entire curve. Factors other than price are going to change supply and are going to actually shift that entire supply curve. Quantity supply is just a point on the curve. So when price changes, you're just moving from point to point on that supply curve. All right, so now we're going to move on to elasticity of supply, which is sh just shows how responsive supply is to changes in price. So elastic supply exists when a small change in price causes a major change in quantity supplied. So price greatly affects quantity supplied. So products with elastic supply can be made quickly, and they can made, be made cheaply. So basically, once suppliers see they can make money off something, boom, they're going to go ahead and start making a ton of it. And they can, because that product can be made quickly and cheaply. So think last time the Los Angeles Lakers won the title, the day after that or a few days after that you started seeing all these Laker shirts and Laker hats and start the stuff popping up. Okay, that just basically indicates that those products, the hats, the shirts and all that kind of stuff had very in uh, excuse me, had very elastic supply because once the a supplier saw that they could sell them, they started making them, and it was pretty quick and easy in order to do that. Now, inelastic supply exists when a change in a goods price has little impact on the quantity supplied. So price doesn't affect quantity supplied very much. So products with inelastic supply take a great deal of time, money, and resources to produce. So examples of that might be oil, gold, silver, other commodities, beachfront property, things that even if the price went up, you can't necessarily produce more of them. That would be, those, those kind of things would have very inelastic supply. Even if the price went up, suppliers wouldn't be able to make any more, much more of it anyway. Okay? So... One other thing to keep in mind is that a supply curve that has very elastic supply is going to have a very horizontal supply curve. And if a um, good has inelastic supply, you're going to have a very, that good is going to have a very vertical supply curve. So that's in something important to keep in mind as well. And the reason is, if a good has elastic supply, a small change in price is going to greatly change quantity supplied, so it's going to be very horizontal. And then inelastic supply, if there's a small change in price, it's not going to change quantity supplied very much at all, so it's going to be a very vertical supply curve. All right, so let's go ahead and answer these questions here. So for number one, the amount of a good or service that a producer is willing to sell at each price is called what? Number two, profit is made when what? You can go ahead and pause the video for a sec if, and answer those, that's perfectly fine. And then we'll move on here and we'll look at the summary. So for the summary we're going to describe to me the law of supply and how the profit motive helps explain the law of supply. So I'll go ahead and check these notes tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing you then. Have a fantastic evening. Bye-bye.